Hello everyone and welcome to another video for the Medical Technology Assessment Program for Clinical Parasitology. In this video, we will be discussing the zoonotic nematodes. Please remember, when we say zoonotic, that means these particular parasites require animals as their definitive host. So, let's start first with the most common or clinically significant zoonotic nematodes, and that would be your Toxocaris species. So, we have two uh, important parasites under this family, and we have your Toxocara canis and Toxocara cati. So, for Toxocara canis, this is the dog Ascaria or the dog roundworm. While for Toxocara cati, this is the cat Ascaria or the cat roundworm. So, let's go to their morphology. So, in terms of the egg or the ova, both are similar to Ascaris eggs, but are larger and thinner shell. So for adults, this is the most clinically significant in terms of diagnosing in terms of their morphology. So for adults, for Toxocara canis, their adults contains a bocephalic allele, just like here on this picture. While for Toxocara cati, it resembles an arrowhead cephalic allele, just like here on this picture. So, in terms of the life cycle, the intermediate host, or sorry, the infective stage rather, of both species, your Toxocara cati and cani, is embryonated egg. While the di diagnostic stage is the larva, which actually resides in the infected tissues of the host. For the disease, this is called Toxocariasis. Later on, we will be discussing the difference between or the definition of this particular disease. So, phatogenesis is associated with the visceral larva migrants. So, again, later on, under phatology, we will be discussing this in, gener uh, in specific. So, it can also attack the eye area of the patient, in, uh, especially when humans are accidentally affected with this particular parasite. Okay, so this is so-called ocular larva migrants. This is where the parasite okay, invades the eye area of the patient causing um, eye symptoms, no eye infections. So in terms of diagnosis, since these are zoonotic, they require um, a more deeper or a more sophisticated method such as your serological methods. So here is a side-by-side -side comparison of your visceral larva migrants or VLM to your cutaneous larva migrants or CLM. So let's discuss first your VLM. So your visceral larva migrants, again, just like we have discussed, this is caused by the Toxocara species, your canis and Toxocara cati. While your cutaneous larva migrants or CLM, this is caused by the zoonotic hookworms, your Ancelostoma caninum and Ancelostoma brasiliense. So let's move on to the infective stage. So in terms of their infective stage, your VLM or specifically your Toxocara species, their infective stage is your embryonated egg while your cutaneous larva migrants is the filariform larva. So as you can see, just like we have discussed in your nematodes, when the particular infective stage is an egg form, the route of infection is usually through ingestion. Just like here on your visceral larva migrants. Well, for cutaneous larva migrants, since the infective stage is the larval stage of the parasite, most of the time, the uh, route of infection is through skin penetration. So in terms of their clinical manifestations, since visceral is also known as the soft organs of our body, wait lang, soft organs of our body, so that means this attack the liver, the eye, the lung, the brain, and all the soft tissues or soft, uh, soft organs of our body. So it causes destruction okay, on these particular organs. While for cutaneous larva migrants, from the word cutaneous, so that means this particular parasite only attack at the site of infection. Huh? So usually they are seen as uh, skin diseases, or sometimes, from the word itself, larval migrants. So that means we can definitely see how or this particular um, parasite move okay, at the surface of the skin. So for the diagnosis, 
So the most important or the most common you uh, commonly used diagnosis for zoonotic diseases, specifically for visceral larva migrants, is antibody and serological testing. So toxocara specific antibody test can be used. PCR is more uh, more specific, your polymerase chain reaction. And in terms of the signs and symptoms, high eosinophilic count is more common for visceral larva migrants. While for cutaneous larva migrants, the physical examination of the serpentinous tract in the skin is enough to diagnose this particular disease. So when we say serpentinous tract, this is the presence of the uh, worm okay, uh, at the top or at this uh, surface of your skin. So the next one is your Angiostrongylus cantonensis. So this is the rat lung worm. And in terms of the morphology, the most described one is the female adult worm, which contains uterine tubes that resembles a barber's pole, just like here on this picture. Also, these particular parasites look white, okay, with a whitish uterus to red digestive tract. In terms of the life cycle, this parasite requires mollus as their intermediate host. In Tagalog, mollus are suso or kuhol, just like here on this picture. While for the definitive host, they require rats, hence the name rat lungworm. So, ac uh, accidental hosts are humans by ingestion of mollus, okay, the intermediate host of our parasite. So, the infective stage of this particular parasite is the L3 larva or the third stage larva. And the diagnostic stage is usually seen or acquired in the brain, eye, or lung tissues of the patient. No? Also, the L3 larva. So, in terms of the morphology, this causes human eosinophilic meningoencephalitis. So, this is characterized by eosinophilia at around 100 to 1,000 leukocytes per UL of, uh, in CSF and symptoms of meningitis or the inflammation within our brain meninges. So, sometimes, um, patient may experience severe headache, hyperesthesia, or the uh, increase in sense Okay, example of this is increased uh, sense of pain, increased sense, uh, sensitivity to light, increased sensitivity to touch, okay, as so on and so forth. And paralysis may also be uh, experienced by the patient. The next one is Anisakis species. Your Anisakis species is also known as the herring worm. So your herring worm, especially their larva, are milky white in color. These are uh, with long stomach and a blunt tail with mucron. By the way, mucron is a paras uh, parasitological term for an organelle, at attachment organelle. So this can be used as uh, in attaching, usually at the stomach area of the patient or rather the intestinal area of the patient. So these are parasi uh, parasites of whales and dolphins. So, the infective stage of the parasite is also the L3 larva. So, in terms of the life cycle, so your Anisakis species requires multiple intermediate hosts. So, the first intermediate host are your copepods. So, I still be, uh, I hope you still remember these particular animals. So, these are microscopic animals that are present in the water. So, these act as their first intermediate host. And then, the second one would be the small fishes. And the third one would be the large fishes. So, in terms of the definitive host which acquire the uh, adult stage of the parasite, dolphins and whales are the one who acts as their definitive host. In terms of the humans, we act as accidental by ingestion of raw seafood. So, either of these three intermediate hosts. No? So, for copepods, since these are the first intermediate host, ingestion or drinking of contaminated water may also infect humans. No? Also, the consumption of raw seafood is also one of the mode of transmission for this parasite. So, in terms of the pathology, for Anisaka species, this is called the herring's disease and this is the accidental pain and granuloma around, around the migrating larva in the intestinal wall. So, when we say granuloma, these are tiny clusters of white blood cells and other tissues. So, it can be found in the lungs, skin, or other parts of the body. 
So they usually form as a reaction to infection, inflammation, irritants, or foreign objects. So remember also that granulomas are not cancerous. No? So these are formed as a reaction to infections, specifically your parasitic infections. So in terms of the diagnosis, take note that the only uh, method that we can view this particular parasite is through gastroscopic exam. So, to check for the L3 larva. Next one is your Diactophyma renale. So, from the species name, renale, that means this is the giant kidney worm. So, in terms of their morphology, the egg of this parasite resembles a barrel okay, that has a thick pitted shell okay, surrounding the embryo, just like here on this picture. So, this picture is actually a tissue biopsy. So, for the adults, these are cylindrical, which are usually colored red or blood red. Okay, sometimes they are bell-shaped with a bursa that has a spicule, just like here on this picture. Spicule, which means a uh, pointy, okay, end, which is usually under the bursa of a worm, okay? So, this is used for copulation uh, or reproduction. So, also, just like the other zoonotic nematodes, the infective stage of this parasite is the L3 larva. The, the, the diagnostic stage is the adult worms, usually seen in kidney tissues. But also, take note that eggs may also be present on the kidney tissues. No? So, they can be viewed using your tissue biopsy. So, let's move on to the life cycle of Diactophyma renale. So, this parasite requires earthworms as their intermediate host, while minks as their definitive host. For paratinic hosts, so when we say paratinic, that means these are also intermediate hosts, which are not needed for the development of the parasite, but nonetheless serves to maintain the life cycle of the parasite. So, they may be extra intermediate hosts, such as your fish and frogs. For humans, we are also the incidental or accidental host by in consumption or ingesting your paratinic host, your fish and frogs. So in terms of the pathology, this causes destruction of kidney tissues. And the only method that we can use here is tissue biopsy or we can also require a urine sample from the patient. But remember, this is only acquired by laparotomy. So, this is the surgical incision or cutting okay, of the abdominal cavity and extracting using a uh, surgical instrument no? in collecting the urine from the bladder. Next one is Dyrophilaria imitis. So, this is the dog heartworm. So, based on the other name itself, so this attacks the heart of your definitive host, the dogs. In humans, we accidentally acquire this parasite and causes peripheral nodules in the lungs, termed as coin lesions. No? So, these are subcutaneous nodules that are present usually at the uh, lungs. Next one is Nasostoma spinigerum. So, your Nasostoma spinigerum, especially their adults, contains a rust-colored cephalic bulb. Usually, this bulb contains four rows of hooks. Unfortunately, under the microscope, we cannot view this. So, usually using your electron microscope, these particular rows of hooks are present no? or can be visualized. So, the infective stage of this parasite is also the L3 larva and the diagnostic stage is L3 larva in tissues. So, as you can see, the trend for zoonotic disease, usually their infective stage is L3 larva and also they attack mostly in the tissues of your organs. So these are parasites of pigs, dogs, and cats. So in terms of the life cycle, they require copepods as their first intermediate host, while the second intermediate host are fish and frogs. So just like we have discussed, the definitive hosts of these are your dogs, cats, and pig, and humans become accidental by ingestion of infected larva in the second intermediate host, your fish and frogs. But just like we have discussed a while ago, uh, drinking of contaminated water may also predispose us in being infected with this particular parasite. 
So, in terms of the pathology, your natostoma spinogerum causes natostomiasis. So, your natostomiasis is a VLM-like syndrome or visceral larva migrants-like syndrome that causes your larva to travel to your brain area. So, this causes CNS involvement, specifically your uh, neurological deficits. So, the only diagnosis for this parasite is through tissue biopsy. So, so that ends our discussion for the zoonotic nematodes. Thank you and good day.